Hey, this is Miguel again. We're going back to the Gospel of John. We're in chapter 15. Um, last video I did um, was uh, more of uh, topical stuff than than anything else, but um, I wanted to get back on track with the Gospel of John, <coughs> and you can check out some of the other stuff at uh, you know your own leisure. Uh, so the last one was why you need Christ, um, but the one before that we just started John chapter 15, <coughs> and we did the first 11 verses. We talked about how um, Jesus is the vine and we are the branches, and that without Him uh, we can't do anything. And when He bears fruit, uh, it's for His glory. <coughs> Excuse me, not ours. Um, and and he he prunes he those that uh, branches that can't be used uh, he says they'll be cast away into fire and burned. So he wants to abide in us and we abide in him so we could he could bear much fruit in our lives and that God could get glorified in this and even if we go back to a quick review verse 8 it says my father is glorified by this that you bear much fruit and so you prove to be my disciples <clears throat> that's how you prove to be a disciple a follower of Christ is that you bear fruit not that you're going to live a perfect life first uh, John is very clear that we um, even as believers we sin but we confess our sin we repent and then we are cleansed in the blood of Christ so, um, and then toward uh, verses uh, 10 and 11, <coughs> um, and that's where we'll connect with these verses today, is that he's telling us to abide in his love, and in order that the things that he has spoken to us in his word, that uh, my joy is speaking, he's speaking, that may be in you, so his joy may be in us, and our joy may be made full. Today, um, we'll talk a little bit about the relationships of believers between each other, and uh, we're going <coughs> to go through verses 12 through 17, and um, again, I'm reading out of the New American Standard. It says, this is my commandment, that you love one another just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends you are my friends if you do what I command you no longer do I call you slaves for the slave does not know what his master is doing but I have called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father I've made known to you you did not choose me but I chose you and appointed you that you would go and bear fruit and that your fruit would remain so that whatever you ask in, in the, of the Father in my name, <coughs> he may give to you. Verse 17, this, is, this I command to you, that you love one another. So that's the relationship between God and us, and us as believers <coughs> toward <coughs> one another. And... Um, this I know I say this a lot, but this this will be a fairly quick video. Um, God here, um, if you look at verse thirteen, um, <coughs> he's talking about the cross. Greater love has no one than this that one lay down his life for his friend. So Jesus is calling those that are his own believers friends, and he gives up. He lays his life down. On the cross, he does the Father's will. He dies for us and he's raised again on the third day, <coughs> according to the scriptures. And he does that for those that believe in him. He's talking about the cross here. Friends, he's talking, he's no, he's calling us friends now. He's not calling us slaves. Um, <clears throat> I want to go real quickly to <clears throat> Second Chronicles. And you can look up this. Second Chronicles. Uh, where is it? 20, verse 7. And um, here, 
it says, Did you not, O our God, drive out the inhabitants of your people, of, of this land, before your people Israel, and give it to the descendants of Abraham, your friend, forever? <clears throat> and I say that because, again, he's talking about us as friend, and even in the Old Testament, you, you hear, you just heard the reference of, of, of Abraham being referred to as a friend of God. So this was God's relationship to us as believers so that those who follow Christ are, in a sense, you have this privilege of being called a friend of God, but we're all slaves, we're all servants um, of God. You can you see, you know, hear the Apostle Paul talk about that. So I, I don't want you to disconnect those two. So um, he chooses us. We don't try God, and I've said this before in other videos, you see those little <clears throat> necklaces or pendants, try God, or this, that, or the other thing. God chooses us, we do not choose God. <clears throat> this goes back to election. And if you want to look that up, <clears throat> you can look that up in the book of <clears throat> Romans, I believe, chapter 8, <clears throat> 29 through 33. But God is choosing us, and He's choosing us that we're going to bear fruit. <clears throat> it's not for uh, an unknown reason. It's for that He may bear fruit in our lives, and that whatever we ask in the Father's name, that we may get it. Now, we don't ask in selfishness. We ask according to God's will. But He chooses us. He draws us. We are given to depravity and sin. God opens our eyes for his need for him. We get convicted of sin. We confess and repent our, of our sin. We believe that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. He shed his blood for us. He rose again on the third day. And we turn to him for forgiveness because he was the only one that lived a sinless life. And he is the only one that can reconcile us to the Father. So there's, there's that relationship between... God calling us, God opening our eyes, and then us being convicted of sin and repenting and turning to Him. And then finally in verse 17, He tells us to love one another. <clears throat> if you look, those are the things that should separate Christians from um, believers from unbelievers. Not that unbelievers can't love, but uh, there's something different about the believer. You can have a, a relationship with a brother or sister in Christ and find yourself helping this person uh, in any form or, or way in prayer and giving and spending time with them there you, when when people look at that that in itself is a testimony and a witness to others that they might start asking what's so different about these people so that love um, is 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 planted by the uh, Holy Spirit of God so that we may do those things that God has called us to do. <clears throat> Love one another, preach the gospel, um, help those that are less fortunate than us, and that uh, when those opportunities come up to, to witness to others, that we would be able to preach the gospel to them. So those uh, that's a, a quick video. John chapter 15, verses <coughs> 12 through 17 and uh, again the relationship of believers with God and with one another and um, as usual I pray that <coughs> this would be a blessing to the body of Christ I would encourage you to study and grow in him and those who don't know Christ that God would open your eyes to your need for him that you would realize that you're on your way to hell unless you repent that you would confess and repent of your sins that you would come to the cross, ask Jesus to forgive you, that his blood would cleanse you from all unrighteousness, and you would be filled with the Holy Spirit, saved and drawn to him even today.